I'm sorry, the video went out. But yeah, he was wondering how Billy ended up. It was going around. Billy was up next. And he talking about his dad and how his dad um was a. Uh, you know, like him and dad, him and his dad would go treasure hunting and go to different spots and find like cool things. And, you know, they was wondering how he ended up in detention. He said that he was tinkering with his lunchbox and he blew it up. <laughs> and that's how he got in there. Um, and then it got to Kimberly and apparently she is, hers was like so dark that she just didn't, you know, want to talk about it right now. So they passed her. And then they went to Jason, and Jason, you know, he's talking about, well, he's the high school guy, everybody knows who he is. Then it gets to Trini. Now, this is where the the whole controversy starts. Now, I kind of seen this happening uh, a mile away. For one, they always do this with recreations, because they're trying to cater to everybody. Some of y'all know where I'm going with this. But I kind of seen it on Yahoo, they kind of, like, told on it. Now... You know, she was talking about how her parents and her family, uh, she don't feel like she, she's connected to them, and she's different, and, you know, I think, I think it was Zach who was talking to her, and, you know, she mentioned, you know, he said, like, how, how she has problems, and she was, and she was, and Zach was like, what, like, boyfriend problems? She was like, yeah, boyfriend problems. So, basically, she was just... It was just a way for her to reveal that she likes girls, you know. But here's the thing. They didn't, and this is one of those things when I talked about earlier when I said um, they did something that I didn't like, but they didn't do it in such a typical way that I actually enjoyed the way that they did it. You know, in a lot of these recreations, like, they always got to put, like, a gay character in there. You know, so... I, I wasn't surprised by them doing it. And I seen it on Yahoo that they were like actually going to do this with the Yellow Ranger. Um, so it really didn't surprise me at all. Um, I, I kind of thought they were going to do it. And then when I seen it on Yahoo, they kind of spoiled it for me, but I wasn't really tripping. Um, yeah, they kind of made her out to be that. But here's the thing. Leading up to that point in the movie, her and Zach kind of had like these moments where they were like kind of... I guess you would say involuntarily flirting with each other. Like they would fall down the mountainside and Trini would land on top of Zach. And, you know, she actually made, I think they made like a Lion King reference up in there. Cause she said, Pinja, uh, like Pinja again, or something like that. It was kind of funny. So, you know, they had moments where it seemed like they were flirting with each other. So I don't think she was a lesbian necessarily. I think she was bi. I think she just likes girls, and she thought that her family would never accept her um, as that. But she never, you know, throughout the movie, she never really told her her family. I don't think, but she confessed to all those guys, and apparently, um, you know, the key to unlocking their powers for them was for them unlocking, like, these things that they were holding on to. Now, later on that night, you know, Kimberly, she ends up jumping and breaking into Jason's house, and she confesses to, you know, what she was holding back on. Well, actually, she didn't break in there. The window was open. She just jumped through. But basically, yeah, she entered his house without permission or whatever. So she wakes up Jason, tells him about how, you know, she had a, well, basically her boyfriend, I guess her boyfriend liked some girl or something like that. And she punched the girl so hard that she kind of mauled her. And but now they didn't show the girl a picture, but they made it seem like she did like some real gruesome stuff. And Jason's face, when, when Kimberly showed Jason the, the picture, uh, Jason looked like, oh my God. Like, you know what I'm saying? He... He was looking like she was messed up pretty bad. And then she realized, oh, I don't want to be a bad person. And I did that, so I feel so awful. I feel like I'm the worst person ever. And Jason reassured her, like, oh, just because you did something awful, you're not an awful person. Um, you know. But she opened up to Jason. Um, and then they went back to the command center again, tried to... Uh, tried to morph 
uh, couldn't do it, send them back to the pit. And matter of fact, at this time, I don't think they went back to the pit. Like, I think they just, like, stopped. And then they had, like, visions of... No, I think that when they tried to morph that this time, I think they had, like, visions because they showed what Rita was going to do to the planet. It was, was kind of like a glimpse of the future. And it was uh, pretty bad. You know, everybody was turned to, turned to, like, stone statues and they were crumbling easy. You know, it was messed up. So, I don't think everybody ended up, like, leaving or something. Either that already went back to the pit. Because there was one more pit scene where they were training. And I think, like, Jason and Zach, you know, they were, like, punching each other or something like that. They were, they, they got into it. And Billy, he ended up, uh, you know, he was kind of, like, in his zone. Like he was trying to, like, stop it. Like, cause he didn't like the fact they were fighting. So he pushed both of them out to the side and he ended up morphing. So he got his, his, uh, his armor. And I, I kind of like the suits, by the way, like the, the, the suits actually look pretty cool. I know a lot of people, when they seen the trailer, they gave the suits a hard time. They actually did a pretty good job with the suits. Um, but yeah, and, but it didn't last long, but you know, he told Zordon that they morph and Billy, he couldn't do it voluntarily. He kind of just had like a. I, don't know, I guess you could say like a moment of clarity to where he just I guess connected with his friends and the powers just came to him so that happened um now obviously this was nothing that ever happened in the original Power Ranger series but you know nothing like this happened in the original Power Ranger series just highlighting a couple things. Uh, let's see, like, where do we go from here? Um, uh, I think the whole team left. Jason goes back to talk to Zordon. And Zordon basically reveals to him that the whole reason why they want them to morph or to get their powers is so that the morphing grid can open up and he can get his body back because his body was destroyed during that first battle with, with Rita and you know his essence had ended up getting uh trapped in the ship by Alpha 5 she put his uh, his uh his, like his essence in the ship kind of like a spirit into the ship and he was on like this this wall like he wasn't in a tube like he was in the original Power Rangers series they had him on like this like this 3D wall so his whole goal was to try to break out and get his body back. So, because he was the original Red Ranger, he wanted to lead the team of Rangers again. Um, but something cool happened. Um, so, I'm going to get to that. So, after Jason reveals that, uh, they all go home. Um, and Rita ends up visiting Trini. She ends up visiting Trini. And, uh,. You know, she had a conversation with him. She's slamming her against the wall and beating her up and things like that. And she t ends, up, ends up telling Trini where she will be. And uh, so Trini ends up uh, calling the, the Rangers. I don't know if they all, they all got a text message or something like that. But they tell Rita, Rita tells Trini where... She will, she's gonna be, and that's at the boat docks. Um, and all the rangers they decide to go there. And here's something else cool that I noticed. Like, of course, back in the show, back in the series, they didn't. Um, they they had to watch the things that they said because it was a kid show. And this one, they they actually use words like kill. Like they said that they 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 gotta go kill Rita. And so they went to the boat docks, seeing Rita there, um, you know, and a fight scene starts and Rita ends up, you know, tying them all up to like the ship. So they tied them up. So they're all tied up to the, uh, to the side and, uh, you know, Billy lead, leading up to this point, you know, he's trying to find the location of the Zeo crystal. He finds it and it's at a place that is actually kind of hilarious. Um, so while they're tied up, you know, Rita 
she asked Jason, like, do you know what my zero crystal is? He said, he says, no. He said, okay, you probably don't, but I know one of you know. So she goes, any, meeny, money, mo goes down to Billy, and she realizes Billy knows. So she threatens to kill Zach. You know, she has her staff up to Zach's neck. And it's, I don't know if she's like zapping him or she's like sucking his powers or his life away, everything like that. So Billy ends up caving in and says, um, I don't, uh, you know, I'll tell you just don't hurt my friend. So she, he tells her and the Zeo crystal is actually located <laughs> at a Krispy Kreme, uh, donut shop in Angel Grove. Out of all places, literally. It's located at a Krispy Kreme donut shop. She's like, oh, this must be a special place. So she takes off. And right before she leaves, she said, oh, Zordon won't respect me if I don't kill at least one of you. So she zaps Billy. And Billy drops down into the water, you know, still tied up. And once she gets away, I guess her power fades. And the ropes, you know, just come off the other rangers. And they pulling Billy up. And Billy ends up drowning. He ends up drowning, ends up dying. So they take him back to the command center. Um, you know, and again, why they had to let the black guy die? Like, like they just couldn't let the black guy live. That uh, they had to kill a black guy. Of course, nothing like this happened in the uh, the original uh, series, but you know that was a cool notion. And let me say this as a side note: seeing things like this. For those of you who, who knew about it, they took notes from that dark Power Ranger film. And what I mean by dark, it was like a bootleg kind of Power Ranger film that like a fan made. It was like a fan made Power Ranger movie. Um, that. Uh, it was, yeah, it was like a fan made Power Ranger movie that was very dark. They had the Black Ranger. He was like a like an exercise guru. He was like wealthy. He was. You know, had sex with a bunch of girls and things like that. It was like a pretty dark movie, but I think it was like a cease and desist they got put out, and they took the video, they took the movie down. It, was, it caused like a big uproar uh, for the time being. So yeah, Billy's dead. So they bring him back to the command center, and they're all, you know, confessing their feelings for each other, saying that they would put their life on the line for any of you, just like Billy did. Uh for any of them like just like billy did for the team uh jason you know he consider uh opened up and said you know i would wish i could give my life for, for billy's the morphing grid opens up finally and alpha's telling zorda you know this is your chance to hurry up and you know come back and uh you know so zorda you know he i don't know i don't know if he jumps into the morphing grid now or whatever but he ends up, you know, reappearing back on the wall. And Alpha wondering what happened. He said, okay, I, I could have uh, used the morphine grid, but you can only bring back one. And then, you know, Billy coughs up the water. He comes back to life. And the morphine grid was never meant to be used. The way that they used it in the movie, it was kind of like a one wish type of deal. Kind of like when you gather all seven Dragon Balls and you wish for something. That's, that's the way they kind of used it in, in, in this movie. Like it was like a like a one wish, one miracle type of deal, you know what I mean? And he instead of using it to bring his body back, he ended up using it to bring Billy back to life. Which was noble of him, cause it seemed like he had some uh some some nefarious intent, I guess you would say. I don't know if nefarious is the right word to use, but he had some ill intent. He was just using them to get his own body back so that he can become the Red Ranger again and lead the Rangers to defeat Rita because he was losing hope for him being the fact that even though they they were the ones that found the power coins they couldn't morph or anything like that so they couldn't really go toe to toe with Rita and her army of putties and you know Goldar um, and, and things like that so you know when Billy comes back to life you know he hugs Jason they're all, you know, buddy up now. So finally, they end up, you know, morphing into Power Rangers. Rita gets her powers back. She didn't eat all the gold that she could eat. Her staff is reformed. She ends up reviving the, uh, 
you know, the putt, well, not reviving, but she ends up um, making Goldar, and she summons an army of putties. The Rangers, they, you know, get their powers. They jump, go out the command center. They go fight the putties that are out there, and they have to head down to Angel Grove to defeat Rita and everything like that. So when they do, you know, they jump into the Zords. Now, mind you, when the, when, when they uh, were during their training, Rita decided to give them a little inspiration. She showed them the Zords and everything, and uh, Zack actually stole the Mastodon Zord and took it for like a little joyride, which was like <laughs> like the funniest thing. And um, one thing about the Zords is that they made them different than the, like very different. Like the 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 Zords actually kind of connected to like this the, the suits kind of like the way Avatar kind of connect like the little antennas to each other. The the there was like this little cord that attached to the back of the Ranger suits, and they could control them, you know, as such. Um, but that was kind of like kind of like a cool difference, and obviously they they, they look different. They look like metal skeletons. I guess that's like the best way to put them, compared to what you've seen in the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers uh, show, which kind of look which they kind of look like robots. This one they kind of look like metal skeletons, kind of like you know, kind of like that. That's kind. Of, I don't know, like, I guess that's kind of like the, they kind of look like futuristic versions of the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Zords. I guess that's a better way to explain it. And another thing, they actually made a Transformers reference, because one of the previews was for Transformers, was for the new Transformers movie, and the movie was obviously made by Lionsgate, you know, they kind of, you know, uh, are the ones that made the Transformers movies. So they actually made, like, a little reference, um, it was a yellow uh, Dodge Charger, and while the fight, you know, they made it to Angel Grove, Jason, you know, he used the foot of the, um, of the, uh, of his, uh, his, um, Tyrannosaurus Rex Megazord, he picks up, like, this yellow, uh, black striped Dodge Charger and he throws it and he says oh I'm sorry Bumblebee so, you know it was like a cool little reference right there um but obviously they made that reference because the new Transformers movie coming out in June uh was it June or July I think it was June because Captain Underpants is coming out in July yeah I, I can't remember but, but I did post a preview um on, on my Instagram at at ADS Play 101, you know, you guys can check that, check, check them out. Even put like one or two clips from the movie in on my Instagram as well. Um, that like little small 10 minute clips and things like that. So, only did three, I wasn't gonna do all of them, but uh, yeah, so they're you know, fighting the putties and everything like that. Rita, she had revived Goldar. She went back to the quarry where they found their original power coins. Uh, you know, of course, prior to the battle, ended up getting Goldar. Um, Goldar makes his way to Angel Grove. They get in the Zords. They go to Angel Grove, fighting off the putties, and it's like this big, massive battle. And, you know, Goldar, he's punching... She, <laughs> so Rita, she goes into the Krispy Kreme donut shop, and this is actually kind of funny. She takes, like, this little plate with two donuts on it, and she's sitting there, and she's eating the donuts. <laughs> like, so, while she's looking for the Zeo Crystal at the Krispy Kreme, she finds two, you know, donuts, and she just starts eating away. Like, I wonder if she became a fan of Krispy Kreme after that. Like, I don't know, like, they never confirm, but... Before I continue, one thing that, you know, that was a bit of a controversy is Rita's outfits. Now, again, if you watch Mighty Wolf and Power Rangers as a kid and you look back on it, you know, Rita's outfits in this, they weren't as bad, in my opinion, as Rita from back in Mighty Wolf and Power Rangers. Mind you, this was, you know, her outfit was kind of revealing, but, it, you know, it, it was a bit mature, but she didn't have like a lot showing. Rita was fully covered, but this woman, had, you know, from the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers uh, series, 
Rita was fully covered, granted, but this woman had fucking ice cream cones for a bra. You know what I'm saying? So, like, just pointy ass ice cream cones for, you know, a bra to, to cover up her, her tits. So, I'm, I'm just looking at the two and I'm just like, you know, this is kind of like, you know, I don't know, like, I'm looking at the two and like, this isn't, isn't so bad as, as people try to make it out to be. But, I digress. Um, so yeah, like, the fight scenes were cool, so, Rita, she's in there enjoying a the Krispy Kreme. She comes out, tells Godar to dig right here by the Krispy Kreme. Uh, Godar, you know, he's punching around the area. End up finding the Zeo crystal was buried way beneath, um, kind of like the intersection area. Uh, that was kind of like a little, that was adjacent to the Krispy Kreme. And the Rangers, you know, they form like a line right there. And they're trying to, you know, fire in their weapons at Godar. You know, Goldar kind of like crushing the the pterodactyl, and they're getting they're getting pushed back into like the the pit where the zeal crystal is, and it's hot. They're passing out, and eventually they get pushed into the pit. But as they're falling, the Megazord starts to form, and uh, they emerge back out. And the Megazord is vastly different from what you've seen in the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. In Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, the series, um, you know, the Rangers, they form the Megazord and the cockpit is in the head. And all five of them have seats in the head. Uh, and this one is kind of like, if you watch Teen Titans Go and they made like the Titan bot. And, and every one of the Titans kind of had like control over one body part. That's kind of how the, this Megazord was operated. You know, Kimberly, she had control of, like, if I'm not mistaken, like, the uh, the right arm. Trini had control of the left arm. Billy had control of the right leg. And Zach had control of the left leg. And um, Jason, he was in the in, in the head. Uh, so they're facing Goldar. I mean, they're pulling out swords. They're stabbing Goldar in the chest and everything like that. Finally beat him. Rita, she comes, she, you know, falls out of, she ends up getting absorbed into Goldar during, uh, like before the fight, she jumps inside the Zodar, inside of Goldar. Goldar absorbs him and um, absorbs her. And, you know, they proceed to fight. You know, after Zordon gets beat up, uh, Goldar gets beat up. Uh, Rita, she kind of like comes out of Goldar and then she jumps directly at the Power Rangers. Whole time she's talking about how, you know, Basically, it's it's it's, it's kind of like she wants Zordon's approval. That's kind of like what this whole thing was about. She just wanted Zordon's approval. That's why she got into a fight with him before, destroyed the planet, or whatever the case is. You know, it's kind of like she was just looking for Zordon's approval the entire time. Now, after they defeat, you know, Rita, she jumps towards him, and Jason calls for Kimberly to like to like smack her. Like at first, they wanted to just like. Uh, take her back to Zordon, and Zordon was gonna judge what, what was gonna happen to her. She she was like, "Fuck that shit," and she just you know jumped towards him from ground to up top. She's getting ready like to like to stab the Megazord with a staff, and they just backhand her into outer space. Now, mind you, when she did this, her staff dropped, and the green power coin, you know, it was you know wherever, because it was in her the green power coin was actually in the staff. Um, and by the way, she never really morphed during that fight, by the way. Uh, but yeah, the green power coin was in the staff and, you know, she got knocked into outer space, got frozen in outer space and now she's floating off to wherever. And, um, you know, they're celebrating and what was cool is that Amy Jo Johnson and Jason David Frank, you know, who played Kimberly and Tommy in the original Mighty Wolf and Power Ranger series, you know, respectively, um, you know, which was the Pink Ranger and the Green Ranger, for those who don't know, um, they actually made a cameo appearance, you know, after they beat Rita and Godar, you know, the, the, uh, this big crowd of people came around, they're taking pictures, and you see, you know, Kimberly, the original Kimberly and, you know, Tommy, they're, like, taking pictures of everything, you're taking pictures along with the people, uh, and things like that, celebrating Billy, you know, he's in a Megazord doing, like, a little grind with it, uh, I don't know, a little, I, I forgot what he called that, but it was, like, a little funny, funny moment, um, so, of course, after all that, 
been taken care of. They get the Zeo crystal. They bring it back. Well, actually, I don't. I don't remember what they did with the Zeo crystal. But it can. It can only be assumed that they brought it to Zordon for safekeeping. So Jason, you know, takes his sword. He puts it back in the command center, and you know, he tells Zordon, you know, he's going to be back for it. You know, another time. So that was basically the movie, and that's the differences that they had between, you know that in the movie, but there was like a little cliffhanger ending, which makes me believe that they're going to make a part two of, like a, like another Modern Morphin Power Rangers movie. So again, remember how, you know, Kimberly, Billy, and Jason, they met in detention? Um, the principal announced, students, we have a new student in detention. Uh, he said, Tommy Oliver, please stand up. Now, if you guys know Tommy Oliver, his name, you know, that's like his full name. That's the Green Ranger. And he's like, Tommy Oliver, and you see like this empty desk with a green jacket on it, uh, you know, hanging off the back of it. He's nowhere to be found. And, the, the, you know, of course, they ended with Billy, I guess he blew up another lunchbox or something like that. <laughs> but... The movie ends there. So overall, the movie was good. The movie was good. I think the nice references to, like the Transformers reference was was nice. Um, kind of how they took the jab at the race at the at the alleged racism from Mighty Morphin Power Rangers with the Black Ranger being black and the yellow, you know, and the Yellow Ranger being you know Asian. Um, they took a, like a jab at that when they were in the lake and you know Zach he's you know sees like cool I'm the black one and Billy asks you know hey why are you the black one you know so that was kind of obviously like a a reference to that um and the fact that one of the things that I didn't what I didn't like is that they were pandering to you know the gay community but like I said it was expected already if you don't expect th with these recreations for them to make at least one character gay like you're being delusional but they didn't do it in a way where it seemed like they were trying to throw a pity party for the girl. She, they, they didn't make a big deal out of it. Let me say it like that. And that's the kind of the thing I liked about it. You know, it, it was kind of like a subtle thing. They didn't, you know, make it like such a big deal, you know. Um, so that that I'm proud of. I'm proud of that. Um, and they didn't really say that she was like lesbian. They kind of, again, because her and Zach threw out that, um, leading up to that point where they were all around the campfire making confessions to each other um, opening up to each other they were kind of flirting with each other a little bit up until that point you know what I mean so you know, it was pretty uh, it was a cool movie so I understood why it took them as long as it did for them to make the movie because you know they had to work out they probably had to train and you know take some martial arts classes they definitely had to bulk up a little bit because they went from being like these little skinny uh, guys to, you know, to having like some tone and some definition and some muscle tone. So they had to work out and they had to train a little bit. But it was funny. It was action packed. It kind of makes you wonder if they're, you know, what they're going to do with the next one. Because um, it seems like they're going to be, a, that they will be a next one. So. I'm looking forward to it. So if you ask me, if you're a fan of the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, it's definitely uh, a, a good movie. Um, if, if you're new to it, uh, it does a good job with recreating it, how they met, etc., etc. Um, I kind of wish they did more with the fight scene, but I understood why they didn't. Uh... I also want to know what happened to the power coin, but I guess if they make a new movie, which it seems like they will, they're going to, you know, reference that. Because, again, when Rita got, she literally got back and she got bitch slapped into the orbit. Um, she dropped her power staff and the power coin was in the staff. So I don't know if they're going to make it to where, like, she, where, like, the power, like, Tommy finds the power coin and somehow she ends up, like, kind of getting, like, pulled back to Earth. Or you know, or something like that, or or if Lord Zed is going to come in there, I wonder if the, since they're mixing up, it seems like they're mixing up references from like different series, you know, because the Zeo Crystal was never again never referenced in Mighty Morphin Power Rangers until the very end when it was crossing over into Power Rangers Zeo, the second series. 
I wonder if they're gonna, you know, bring like the Tinga Crows in there, which is around when the Power Rangers got like their Ninja Ranger powers, um, which is like season three of the first series. But yeah, they did a good job. Like they did a good job with this. I liked it. So I would give it like an eight out of ten because a couple things could have been better, and I think I already explained that. Uh, probably like an eight out of ten, possibly a nine out of ten. You know. I think they did a pretty good job with it. You know, I liked it. Uh, There's a couple things they could have did better, but, you know, it, it was a very good movie. So, hopefully they actually make a part two. Hopefully they don't take a, you know, like three years to make the, like the sequel that it seems like they make, because I would like to see how what happened to the green power coin, what they're going to do with the Zeo crystal. Um, if Bumblebee was actually all right, <laughs> um, you know, I'm curious to see what they're going to do because now they really piqued my interest. So great job with the movie Lionsgate thumbs up. Uh, I liked it and I encourage anybody to go see it. Anybody and everybody to go see it. Um, it's rated PG 13, but they did again, little subtle things that you know that Power Rangers in the original series they never did they never used words like kill like they did in in this um again it's like they took notes from that uh fan made Power Rangers movie uh, which was very dark and like gritty um and you know they did what you would expect just not in a in, in an expected way I guess you would say. So, yeah, man, that's my recap of the movie. I probably did like a bum job because I am half sleep, half woke right now. I'm kind of losing my space here and there. But, you know, hopefully like, you, you guys did get the gist of it. And I hope you guys enjoy this. So, thank you guys for watching. Peace. I'm going to sleep. And later.